to make accessing the cover for the engine easier, I'm gonna take this seat out. It's very easy, four 18 millimeter bolts. Some of them will have a little cover like this, which we'll have to remove in a second. And some won't, such as this one at the front here. You can see the nut will be exposed down there. So let's go ahead and unthread it. There's one on each corner. So we'll just go around and remove them all. Nut number two. On the back side, let's pull these caps off and that'll expose the two rear nuts. Last one. Now I'm just gonna lift the seat up. Pull it out of here, tilt it back. And there's wiring attached, but I'm not gonna disconnect it. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I went ahead and did the same thing to the passenger side so I can have both areas clear to pull the doghouse off. And on both sides, uh, on the driver's side, it's next to the gas pedal. On the other side, it's, well, the opposite. On the other side, it's, well, in the same area, just on the other side. Lift this flap up, and that's gonna unlock the latch for the doghouse. The next thing I wanna do is remove this knee panel. It's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts, one over here, one over here, and the rest is just push clips. So once those are out, we'll pop it off. Pull straight out. Take down the kick panel here, the knee panel, two 10 millimeter bolts. One. There's the second one. And at this point, you can just pull straight out on it. At this point, grab it from the side, pull straight out. Okay. Underneath the center console slash cup holder, uh, there are uh, two more clips that we have to undo. I have a panel here that's missing. It's like a little pocket. Either way, open that up and there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts right behind it. Remove both. There are two more up top. Now this entire unit can be removed and it will expose these two clips. This one's already loose, that's nice. So is this one. And now you can lift this up. Pull it out. Pull straight back as you lift up. And there you go. You have access to the backside of your engine. To replace the ignition coil, I'm gonna start by unplugging it. Lift on this tab, push the connector back and I'm gonna unplug the spark plug wire as well. Next to the seven millimeter socket, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts that hold it onto this bracket. Speed things up a little bit. Make sure you don't lose the bolts. Grab the ignition coil, take your new ignition coil and bolt it back up. Don't go crazy tight on these, they are very small and they will break. Plug it in at the top. And over here, you can put a little bit of dielectric grease on the end of the terminal here if you'd like. That'll prevent water from building up in there, creating corrosion, and it's gonna help the spark plug wire not stick to the coil in the future. At this point, you can go down the line and do the same to the rest of them. Let's put the cover back on for the engine. It should just slide right in, but of course, be careful of any wires that are hanging down. I'm not sure if these were supposed to be uh, tied up here or if someone has added these, but if you have them, 
make sure they're out of the way. And if you don't, well, don't worry about it. So just slide it. Make sure that this rubber seal here doesn't pop off. It can easily fall and then it doesn't make a seal. You get water, potentially exhaust fumes in here. It's not good. So slide it in all the way and make sure that it lines up with its um, points where it clips in. Looks like I have to shift it to the driver's side a little bit. There we go. All right, that just fell into position. Let's latch it on. Just like that. We'll do the same on the bottom here. And of course, the same on the driver's side. Don't forget about this air vent it goes in here. Just slide it in, it has these little pins that kind of help it stay in place. Let's put the cup holder back. It's got four 10 millimeter bolts, line it up. And we'll go ahead and start these in. There are two on the bottom and a little bit harder to see, but there are two on the top here. Let's see if I can start them in like this. Okay, snug them up. Typically you'd have another pocket or a compartment that latches in here. Mine is completely broken off and I don't have it, but obviously if you have yours, go ahead and put it back. Let's put this knee panel on the passenger side. It's got clips along the top that need to slide into these slots here. Okay, and then two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom. That's one. That's two. Same on the driver's side, clips all along the top. And two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on the bottom. Somewhere, here they are. All right, let's put the seats back. Let's bring the seats back and line them up with their corresponding mounting studs. Oops, make sure you don't pinch any wiring. And drop it down. Let's put the nuts on. There's one on each corner. Let's bottom them out. Make sure they're nice and tight. All right. Okay, last one out of the four. Again, there's one on each corner. Make sure they are all nice and tight. All right, let's do the same to the passenger side if you took both seats out. And don't forget about these little covers. Put those back to hide the bolts, or the studs. Last bolt on the passenger side. Again, four on each corner. Make sure they are nice and tight. Okay, this one unfortunately didn't have any little caps for me, but at this point, you can go ahead and turn on the engine, take it for a rope test.